नमस्ते हमेशा खुशरो बिटिया आई एम जेवीएन डॉक्टर पिनाक्षी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ शला के तंत्र फैकल्टी ऑफ आयुर्वेदिक साइंस ज्योति विद्यापीठ वीमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस द कॉर्नियल अल्सर बिफोर दैट वी हैव टू डिस्कस अ ब्रीफ रिव्यू ऑफ द इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ कॉर्निया वट इज द इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ कॉर्निया इट इज नोन एज अ कैरेटाइटिस and uh, keratitis is characterized by corneal edema cellular infiltration and ciliary congestion these are the three terms which are very important in term of keratitis <clears throat> ciliary congestion is related to the eye redness and uh, then the classification of the keratitis it is difficult and uh, to classify and assign a group to each and every case of keratitis as overlapping of the concurrent findings tend to obscure the picture and uh, however the following simplified topographical and etiological classifications provide a workable knowledge first there is a topographical classification or the morphological classification so it can be divided into two types of ulcer keratitis ulcerative keratitis and as a non ulcerative keratitis so first we will classify the ulcerative keratitis ulcerative keratitis is in the corneal ulcer corneal ulcer can be further classified variously depending upon the location it can be central corneal ulcer or the peripheral corneal ulcer depending upon the purulence they can be purulent corneal ulcer or suppurative corneal ulcer which is most bacterial and fungal corneal ulcers are suppurative and the second is a non purulent corneal ulcer which most of the viral chlamydial and allergic corneal ulcers are non suppurative then the third classification is depending upon the association of hyperpoion there can be simple corneal ulcer without hyperpoion and second there is hyperpoion corneal ulcer then the fourth classification is depending upon the depth of the ulcer there can be superficial corneal ulcer second one deep corneal ulcer third one corneal ulcer with impending perforation and fourth is a perforated corneal ulcer then depending upon the slough formation there is non sloughing corneal ulcer and sloughing corneal ulcer then there is non ulcerative keratitis it can be superficial keratitis or deep keratitis then superficial keratitis can be classified as the diffuse superficial keratitis and the superficial punctate keratitis which is also known as the spk then deep keratitis can be non suppurative and suppurative in the non suppurative deep keratitis can be classified as interstitial keratitis disciform keratitis keratitis profunda sclerosing keratitis whereas the suppurative deep keratitis can be classified as the central corneal abscess or posterior corneal abscess then there is the etiological classification it can be infective keratitis allergic keratitis trophic keratitis keratitis associated with diseases of skin and mucous membrane keratitis associated with systemic collagen vascular disorders traumatic keratitis idiopathic keratitis so in case of first classification the infective keratitis it can be bacterial viral fungal chlamydial protozoal spirochetal allergic keratitis can be fractanular keratitis vernal keratitis atopic keratitis the trophic keratitis can be exposure keratitis neuroparalytic keratitis keratomalacia atheromatous ulcer 
then keratitis associated with disease of skin and mucous membrane keratitis associated with systemic collagen vascular disorders then traumatic keratitis which may be due to mechanical trauma chemical trauma thermal burns radiations then idiopathic keratitis for example wooden's corneal ulcer superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis superficial punctate keratitis of thigerson then we come to the ulcerative keratitis corneal ulcer may be defined as discontinuation in the normal epithelial surface of cornea associated with so first is the infective keratitis the bacterial corneal ulcer bacterial corneal ulcer being the most anterior part of eyeball the cornea is exposed to atmosphere and hence prone to get infected easily at the same time cornea is protected from the day to day minor infections by the normal defense mechanisms present in tears in the form of lysozyme beta lysine and other protective proteins therefore infective corneal ulcer may develop when either the local ocular defense mechanism jeopardized or there is some local ocular predisposing disease or host immunity is comprised or the causative organism is very virulent then the etiology of the bacterial corneal ulcer there are two main factors in the production of the purulent corneal ulcer first is a damage to the corneal epithelium and second is the infection of the eroded area however following three pathogens can invade the intact corneal epithelium and produce ulceration that is neisseria gonorrhea cornebacterium diphtheria and neisseria meningitis then first point is the corneal epithelial damage it is a prerequisite for most of the infecting organisms to produce corneal ulceration it may occur in following conditions first corneal abrasion due to the small foreign body misdirected cilia concretions and trivial trauma in contact lens wearers or otherwise second is the epithelial drying as in xerosis and exposure keratitis then third is due to the necrosis of epithelium as in keratomalacia fourth is the desquamation of epithelial cells as a result of corneal edema as in bullous keratopathy fifth is the epithelial damage due to trophic changes as in neuroparalytic keratitis then second point is the sources of infection in it include the exogenous infection from the ocular tissue and endogenous infection exogenous infection the most of the times corneal infection arises from exogenous source like conjunctival sac lacrimal sac in case of decrease cystitis infected foreign bodies infected vegetable material and water borne or air borne infections then source of infection from the ocular tissue owing to direct autonomic anatomical continuity diseases of the conjunctiva readily spread to corneal epithelium those of sclera to stroma and of the uveal tract to the endothelium of cornea then third source of infection is the endogenous infection owing to a vascular nature of cornea endogenous infections and are of rare occurrence the third point is the causative organisms common bacteria associated with corneal ulceration are staphylococcus aureus pseudomonas pyocyana streptococcus pneumoniae e coli proteus klebsiella and gonorrhea and meningitis and cornebacterium diphtheria so this session completes here respect of the bacterial corneal ulcer we will discuss in the next session thank you so much this session is powered by digital version 2.0 jyoti vidyapeet women's university i hope you are satisfied with my digital session 
if you any query please mention in the comment box i will resolve it thank you so much